when you do this, this is the part that has to be tightened down real nice and tight. This guy on the back, when Richardson first made these, now I know Jim saw some pictures like on the internet where you got this piece back here to hold the receiver back here. Actually, when I got my vice originally, I called Doug Richardson and I said, hey, forgot to send me some of the plastic and the screws for the back east. You don't even need that. Sure. It just need, this is just to keep the thing lined up straight, okay? But we're gonna use this since they did it anyway. But this, you don't wanna crank this down because you don't wanna squeeze mm -hmm. the receiver. This part's solid, you can, this has gotta be tight. And this works with both the 21, 28s, and M1s? Oh yeah, the oh yeah, so yeah, any of them. yeah, 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 right. So what you wanna do is you don't want this like that, mm -hmm. and you don't want it, you see where the cutout is for the, uh, crank it down on, on, on the ejection on the port. So what I do, is I just leave it right about like that. So you can see part of the witness mark on the sure. receiver. And if your barrel had a witness mark, when you're putting the barrel back on, you can, you can line them up. So the original 21 barrel had a witness mark on yes. it. Yes, it did. It would have been just like this. So that's the World War II um, Stevens barrel. Yeah, and the World War II barrels, they, they copied the, hi, how you doing? They copied the uh, Colt barrels. Okay. So that, so you this is a World War II Stevens barrel? This is, yes. so it's a replacement okay. type barrel. Yeah. Okay. It's never been on a gun because yeah. there's no pin cut for the compensator. Now this gun, when whoever replaced the barrel at whatever point in time they did this, didn't pin the barrel, they probably just Loctited the compensator okay. on. So my guess is, even though this is a World War II barrel and a World War II compensator, this was not done during the 40s. If they had done this during the 40s, that the compensator would have been drilled and pinned, just like the original guns. And how are you able to tell that the compensator is a World War II compensator? Uh, right, right. It's the markings on it. It's the markings on the top and on this side, there's the, the uh, bullet Thompson bullet logo on here and then the cuts information here mm -hmm. that's a type 4 compensator from World War II. Also this site has a certain profile the Colt profile of the sites were rounded like this the World War II sites went up sharply and did this. Okay. So They're again. usually flat on the top. If yeah. You see yeah. The top's flat it's a World War II site. Okay. Both of these are World War II you know as this barrel of course but because this was Loctited on originally and again hoping they did blue Loctite you should just be able to get a, uh, a compensator wrench and just spin this puppy right off. And if you do, and you want to put that other barrel on here so you have a finned barrel, mm -hmm. because this was Loctited originally, you don't have to worry about that pin that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. You just put more blue Loctite on, spin it on, get it lined up, let it harden, you're good to go. Okay. Good. So now, gentlemen, this inside this, underneath the barrel, there's going to be... Making copies of this stuff? Yeah. You can get you can make copies of this. Okay, here's the here's a close-up of the grip mount. Okay. That's the piece you see. Well, let me take it off so you can see it come over here. Right down under there. Okay. Oh, Oops, sorry, you're good. Okay. See where the, the grip mount is dovetailed into the mm -hmm. receiver. And there's a tab on this that holds the barrel in. So the reason that these barrels are hard to get off is you have to unscrew it and then take this out. If you try pulling this off, you'll, you'll ruin it. There's a, there's a piece of metal on there that rests against the, the barrel and, and holds that thing in there. And that's what this dovetail is. Now they stamp the original serial number on the receiver underneath the grip mount. And the reason for that was, is when they made the receivers and to finish the inspection, they number it. They kept track of the numbers of where they were on the serial numbers. So they stamped it under there, and then it would go to the the roll die thing, and they would roll die the number that they saw under there in the two places on the receiver, and then blew it. It's just a, that bullet logo they had an earlier one up until about serial number 5,000. That's when they started using this bullet logo. So my theory is, and I, I could be proven wrong in a few minutes, is that the original paperwork shows this was confiscated in 1925. In 1925, it's unlikely that they were selling serial numbers in the 5,000 range. Okay. 
So I'm not sure that that date is correct. Now it could be if, if maybe if it's correct and you can never verify that they really got it in 1925, it would have been unusual for a 5,000 serial number gun to have been sold that early. Most of the five, 6,000 serial number guns that we see were sold in 1927, 28, 29. And that's what these books will tell us. Once that's they what the books will tell us, right. Now, again, they didn't sell them in chronological order, but generally speaking, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 numbers are sold in 1921, 22, 23, okay. 24. In general. general generally. Generally. Good, good right. on There's always exceptions. Right. So tight, but not cranked down as hard as you possibly can. Okay. And these, we're just going just gonna to hand tighten these. We're not going to bother cranking this down. Just to give back some support back there. Yeah, just keep it in line. So it doesn't tend to shift. Sure. So what we're going to do instead of using this grip puller is we're going to use put a, a single screw in here and just use a claw hammer to pull it back. Again, Richardson designed a tool later that was exactly the same kind of tool. It grabbed it up here, but the same concept was you just torqued it a little bit so we can get the wrench over. We don't want to separate it from the barrel any more than we have to sure. so we don't put too much stress on the mat. And of course it goes in at an angle. And this would be the same procedure for an M1? Yes, exactly. Because okay. all the grip mounts in terms of their, their basic layout are the same. Now they were manufactured differently. Mm -hmm. right now. There you go. Alright, so just so you know, I bought one of the earliest um, of these from Doug Richardson <coughs> before he made the grip pullers. This is actually how he advocated doing it. So okay. I'm not making up some jury rigged way of doing it. Sure. This is actually what he recommended. Okay. I'm going to have to get right about your camera as you can come right behind me. Yeah. Well, here. Come back over here. Come back over here. <coughs> All right, Raj. Yep. <coughs> <coughs> Let me get this ready, hold on. Yep. Okay, Paul. Keep going, keep going. Well, we're going to have to tighten it. That's, that's, it's not that, it's, not, it's the vice. It's, it's these the vice which turn. Oh, okay. <coughs> One more, one more. Uh, wait. Okay, good. Let go. Okay. Can Chuck tell us why um, the card is being used? The card is there so that when we turn the barrel, the grip mount that is is uh, got a lot of tension and it. it rests against the barrel. It doesn't score the barrel. Okay. It doesn't wear the bluing off as we turn. Sure. And when this barrel was installed, you'll see a little score mark on it from when that wasn't done sure. when this one was originally installed. Okay. And what are you using there, Chuck? That's just uh, sandpaper? This is, no, it's uh, just uh, emery. Emery. Uh, Richardson also recommended this. You put the emery against the inside of the wrench. It gives it a grip, and you put the smooth side against the barrel. So when you tighten it down, it protects the barrel from the metal-to-metal -metal contact so that if it slips, it, you're not scratching the barrel. Sure. So you just cut a piece that'll fit right within that. Just standard 150 grit emery paper. Of course you do. 
Okay, so. Want me to hold that while you adjust yeah. the paper? This too. The other way. Yeah. So that's important where the handle's going to go needs to be on, on this side. Yes. maximum use of the first turn because the wrench is going to end up hitting the grip mount and sometimes if it's not loose you got to readjust the screws again and make one more turn with the wrench and then you can we can hand hand loosen now these you want to kind of try to uh, you want to line this up where's our bright light there branch let me get it These you want to be able to, of course, I had to make a mark on the barrel, but yeah. you don't want this flush with the receiver either. You want to get it close, but not way down here. In other words, you don't want to tighten. You want to tighten it at the fat part where it fits right. Okay. Okay. And then this is just kind of time consuming part. You got to make sure you tighten these down all evenly. Kind of like a tire on your you lug nuts on. Correct. Exactly the same concept. And how tight do you want to go? You want you, there's got to be firm, otherwise it's going to slip. Super tight. And if it does start to slip, then sometimes you have to tighten it a little bit more. Right. Just want to make sure you get it even. Like you're doing fine. It's just all a matter of taking your time. Yeah. Right? Yep. Don't push it, don't rush it, just kind of steady and slow and pay, pay attention. And you can judge what's turning by watching the front sight. If the front sight up here starts to move, as you're turning the barrel, you know you're turning the barrel. Yeah. If you're if this is moving and this side isn't moving, then you know you're not tight enough. Right. So if we're ready to go, and usually what you do is you don't have to give it a slam, but you want to try to crack it. There we go. And you don't need right. the sesquer here, obviously. Then yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. I never used it. Ready? There you go. go. It worked. Easy. Yep. You made it look easy. See, now it won't go that far. Sure, because you're so, getting the grip now. <coughs> yep, so now, no, we're going to have quiet. to loosen, Usually one more, sometimes two, but yeah, it came pretty easy. It did. Well, I expected it to. Being that it's a World War II replacement barrel, yeah. Well, but also it's been done in a modern, because as soon as we saw that it wasn't a pinned comp, yeah. we knew somebody had done it since probably the 70s or 80s. Yeah, sure. This, so, even in the 50s, they wouldn't have used Loctite, they would have gone, oh no, you gotta pin those things, and the gunsmith would have actually pin Yep. Them. Yeah. <clears throat> and now that we got blue Loctite, really, there's no reason to pin them anymore. Yeah, but it just looks cool. It does look correct. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's original. I don't see the hole where the pin There isn't, okay. because oh. it wasn't ever drilled. Oh, sure. You need it a special jig that yeah. drills the hole through the all three units. Interesting. And nobody wants to spend yeah. the time and money to do that, that so. Because you have to place it such that the hole intersects the, it goes through the compensator, but intersects both the sight and the barrel threads. Mm -hmm. Put the pin in, that's what holds it in place. Almost, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, there is a square mark there. Yeah. Not from us. No, yeah. that was from, from before. This yeah. You know what? This is coming out. Yeah, I, I, it's, I think it should. Yeah. Just so go I, ahead and release we, it. We, we can take this. Out. Get ready for the unveiling. I don't mean to burst your bubble, but um, there's a gun in Chicago that was a gangster gun yeah. that had a different barrel on it that I had the state police pull the barrel to try to find the secret number. Yeah. Guess what? The gangsters found the secret number oh, and that really? was round off too. <laughs> right. But I don't think that's going to be the case with this. Yeah. No, I don't either. Yeah, that's got to be pretty internal knowledge to their production at Cole. Well, I think what know. happened is that something happened to the barrel when they had a, a gangland armor replace the barrel, and he must have seen the number. Yeah. And when he saw the number, they, he ground it up. Well, just like they, they got rid of the JHB here, there's no reason to get rid of JHB yeah. there, but they did anyway. Yeah. So, as he said, if they pulled that barrel and saw the number, they'd just get rid of it. Yeah. Okay. We taking bets on the serial number? I'm saying 5,000. 5,000. In the 5,000 range, yeah. not, not 5,000. Well, I think, um, I think Nate ought to do this. Let him go. Yeah, I'd uh, be honored to. I'm going to hold this, just okay. unscrew that. We're, we're all good here. Yep. Yep. Okay. There you go. And notice how loose this grip mount is now? Yes. There are actually some of these, there's a special tool that Doug Richards had made that pulls these out because sometimes they've been in there so long they dry, don't want to come out. grease or yeah. something, they don't want to come out. This sure. didn't come right out. I have that. So go ahead. Out, right? go ahead and slide it out. There you go. And that will take these off and you'll get to see your number, hopefully. Okay, you guys didn't uh, make your guesses on the serial number. You're the expert. You're the, uh, again, <laughs> yeah. I'm not a cold guy, so I'm going with what you said. Makes sense to me. Okay, I'm going to walk behind you. <clears throat> I see the number, so it's definitely not defaced. Perfect. It's hard to see in the oil, but... We'll have to clean it. Yeah. Four. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the other way. Yeah. Looks like four a nine four. Four, four nine. Let's go for four nine though. Yep. There's this is the second forty nine uh, thousand or forty nine hundred gun I've seen with the earlier logo. So I thought okay. it was right around yeah. five thousand. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you were that's right even, on. That's even cooler. You want me to get a rag, right? I'm just. I got a rag. Don't get your fingers out there. Four nine four five. Yep. Yep. Four nine four five. And that matches uh, just the edge of that number you see on the receiver, too. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we decided there was a five there. Yeah. Exciting, huh? Yeah. Something up in our you know, department newsletter, too, for the retirees to see. Now, here's the fun part. We're going to check the book and hope it's in the book. Yeah. What I was hoping is that there was some guns that went to the Tui gang that were, they used phony glitter hood from a place called Gopher uh, Mining Company in Minnesota. Yeah, I hope it's one of the Gopher Mine guns because very few of those have ever surfaced. Okay. We'll see though. Four, nine, four, five. There it is. Chicago, Illinois, Wabash Avenue, Gopher States Mine Company, Minneapolis. There you go. 520 of 27. Uh, yes. 520 of 27, it was shipped, so it couldn't have been confiscated in 1925. June 10th, 1925 is what the form said, so, right. so now so what you, I can you do... You see what I'm saying? That yeah. I, I thought a 5,000 at least yeah. serial number would be later. Yeah. Was it the Tector Publishing Company? Uh, no, no, it's a Gopher oh. State Mines. Von Lenkert and Antoine Sporting Goods. Yes, Von Lenkert and Antoine. Okay. They sold guns to the ones that end up in the St. Valentine's Day massacre. The Gopher State Mines, they think, was the Tui gang that got a bunch of them, and they were shipped to a, a phony company called Gopher State Mines. Yeah. If Gordon was alive, if he's listening, Gordon, 
you found another one because he had only found two of them over the years. He's so that's why it makes sense it's up here in Minnesota. This is one of seven. So now we found another one. Yeah. Yeah. And the interesting thing too is is we've got these booking records going back to about 1936. Now what is it? Hold on, so now I can go back with that date and refocus on. It's the an AC, bookings. right? Yes, AC. Okay. 21 AC. That, with the with the silencer. Yeah. That's compensator. Okay. Right. Sure. The you could put a silencer on a Thompson. They used the Maxim silencer at the time, but you wouldn't have it on with the compensator. So the fact that this was an AC, they just saw the compensator and assumed it was a silencer when they registered the gun. Yeah, and those records are pretty accurate. That was shipped as an AC from what order those records. Yeah. And by 27, that's when they introduced the compensator. They were really pushing the compensator. So you can still order a 21A gun in 27, 28, 29, 30, but they were really pushing the compensator. So most of the guns that were sold in the 27, 20, 29 range were uh, AC's. And you mentioned this, this Thompson logo changing, so then uh, this was probably applied near the time of purchase, not at the time of production. Oh, no, 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 this is actually at the time of production. The original um, auto ordinance serial number uh, says aut ord co, A-U-T dash ord co, and it's a, it's, a, it's a more stunted type bullet. Sure. Somewhere around 5,000 serial number range, they decided to change it to the one that says Thompson. Now, there's three different ones. There's Auto Ordnance Corporation for general purposes, one to 5,000. You see them in the 49, yes. And you know what? You might see a five. You might see serial number 5,003. That might have the Auto Ord company. Yeah. As I said, if they had 20 receivers in production that were being inspected when they changed over, some of them had the old one, some of them had the new one. This didn't get stamped till they, um, till they were inspected. Okay. They didn't care. So yeah. 503 could say Auto Ordnance Corporation. You might find a 5,000 one with the other one. That was right around that time. Interesting. Now the uh, other thing is, after 10, serial number 10,000, the Thompson Bullet logo, you see this one just says trademark? Yes. The ones after about 10,000 say trademark registered U.S. Patent Office underneath. Sure. So there's actually three styles of, of the Thompson logo. Okay. What do you make of that, Mark? Just uh. Oh, that might be a gangster's. Uh, How many times it used to kill? Used to kill, kill Mark. Somebody. Yeah, that's. Definitely looks that like that was purposely done in, in the yes. way they're lined up. The, the St. Valentine's Day Master gun has two, both of those two guns have three. Three slashes. Three slashes on them <coughs> from Fred Burke. Yep. On the trigger frames. Very so interesting. Very well could be. Nice, nice call on that. No, those were yeah. those definitely done. I mean, that was they're, intentional. they're, they're deep enough that that's, that's not an that's accident. That's an accident. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll send you all kinds of stuff on the two E's and the fact that they, I think they, Recovered one of these guns, I think the Gopher State Mine gun, one of them was recovered in Illinois. Uh, <coughs> so they weren't all unique up here to, to Minnesota. Sure. But the gangsters from Chicago were up here all the time. Okay. And it will tell you, I know uh, Harrisdale was into the Gopher State Mine guns because very few of them have ever shown up. But you knew you had a gangster gun. Here's a true gangster gun for sure. Too bad you can't find it or something. Like Yep, Gopher State Mines. Why they would have changed that barrel uh, just from wear and tear over the years? No, it was the range, yeah. reloads. All these places made reloads. Probably a squib load. They bulged the barrel. Sure. You know, what's it say? Right here talks about the different ones and it appears in the, you know, this is the information about Gopher State Mines here, and it shows these are the seven guns, and yours is right in the middle. I had a feeling it was uh, maybe a gopher state mine. You know. Yeah, you're, you're off. your feelings have been pretty spot on, Chuck. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. I studied this stuff for a long time. But you can see, relatively speaking, how easy this was to do. I yeah. mean, once you get things, the, the setup is the most important part. Yeah. Take the time, as we were saying earlier. Yeah, for your gun, now that you know how to use it, yeah. I wouldn't recommend using this puller thing until you get that taken off. Just do it the way I did it. 
you know, with mine having that larger West Hurley grip bar, would that change any of this? No, okay. because putting that screw in and then just pulling it, yeah. and that screw is a 14 by 24, by the way. Well, actually, with West Hurley, are they still 14 24s? I'm not even sure. You'll have well, to check that. And I could probably just reuse this screw, right? Because I'm, well, not, I'm not good dealing with the whole. Uh, yeah, but holder. you're putting a claw hammer on it, which uh, might damage it. Yes. You might yeah, get, go get an extra screw from Sarco. Yeah, just buy one, one two screw. And yeah. you, you buy one that you can. You're going to get boogered up by using yeah. the claw hammer. Right? Yeah. Or if you can buy a 1424, just a, a Here, old Here. style. Uh, Here. My gift to you. Oh, thank That's you. That's an original. Thank you, Don't booger that one up. Yeah. Booger up the. When it's whichever one's better. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. But yeah, so it shouldn't be no difference. You should just be able to tweak it like we just did, and sure. then you're good to go. <coughs> Excellent. Excuse me. The only difference being that the West Hurley guns, some of them, they, I don't know whether they use Loctite or what they did, but some of them are a little tough to get off. Yeah. This one you saw broke easily. Yeah. Very easy. Yeah, the Colt guns are pretty easy. In fact, I've seen people with pipes twice as long as this trying to get the leverage to yeah. <laughs> to release one. Well, that's great. Clean and re-oil the grip mount, put it in so that way it won't be frozen up and they're binding in the future mm -hmm. when you go to change something out. So you saw one of the important things is leave yourself a little bit of room when you clamp that down, sure. so you can see that, and don't put the uh, the, the the wrench, the vice thing, all the way up to the receiver. Okay. Leave yourself a quarter of an inch. Well, and again, especially when you're reinstalling it, you need to see that for the witness line to be able to yeah to properly line it up. Start the threading from any particular spot in order for that witness part to line up correctly? No. No. I should have asked uh, when you were spinning that, I saw a mark on there. I was wondering what uh, who made that barrel. Oh, it's a, it it's a Stevens. It's Stevens? Stevens. a square rest. Okay. It's a, Stevens is a, a sister company of um, Savage. Savage. Right. And they did a lot of the spare parts. Yeah. So you will find barrels that are Savage and barrels that are Stevens. And the difference is the way the S looks, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the rounded S is Savage, the squared S is Stevens. And actually they're correct for either. An early right. Savage would have the, the round S, but guys get goofy. Yeah, mean, any time after early, it makes no difference. Right, because even some of the later Savage A1s had Stevens barrels. Right out, of, right out of the factory. All right, so what do we want to do? We want to get this in the down and position because we're going yes. this way. Correct. Or maybe overlap slightly. Overlap just a hair. Just a hair if you can. Yeah. Yeah. If they don't quite touch, that's okay too, because when you tighten it down, it's going to push push it together. But you don't want to you don't want a quarter inch gap. Or anything. Now this is where the light's going to come in handy because we've got to look at that witness mark to get it to line up again.
did you want to consider sometime having this wood uh, refreshed? Yeah. yeah it's I'll not refinished, just refreshed. Yeah. I'll talk to the talk to the boss and read about you, it. I'm sure, yeah, that's fine. If you ship it to me, no charge, I'll ship it back to you. It will be cleaned and oiled. It will look real nice. Between that and a barrel from PK, this will be uh, looking real great yeah, after this. No, down. no, I haven't seen anything done yet, really. I want to get it lined up. Yep. Where's that? Just a big wrench first. Right here. It's a big one. Tightened except for where that let the last. Where, half there. Can you see that mark I put on it? It's going to be hard to see, I think. Uh, Do we wear it off? By it's it's worn that? off. We wore it off because it's right, the S is right there. So you're you're maybe in 16th of a turn to get it in line. It was right below the S. Right yeah, below the S. I'd be surprised if it wore off because you weren't manipulating the barrel right there on yeah, the end. Well, we, all, all we just touched it and it's yeah. because it was just it was a marker. Oh, yeah. Reach in the hands. It, it's fine. We'll get close enough, I think. Okay. I think it was right, right at the bottom. The, it was right at the bottom of the S. Like we yes, we yep. get it close enough. Because you're going to put a new barrel on it. Anyway. Yeah, eventually here. Yep. And Pete and I will take a crack at this old thing with the Mohawk wrench and mm -hmm. see how different it is. It's a whole key. Take your time. Okay, now you where you want to be this way? You might have to reset, I suppose, huh, when you... You mean, should I be a little closer? No, I didn't know. Is that where you usually well, are? Yeah, I'm, I'm as far down as I can go, because okay. I'm going to push okay. up. Okay, got it. mining company is that uh, to run by a, a gangster person that was totally on paper and it was an absolute fictitious company? It was just letterhead. Okay. It was letterhead stationery. They, uh, now you can look in maybe your historical societies up here to see if there ever really was a gopher mining company. I don't think there was. I think they just created letterhead. Yeah. And they said they needed it for protecting mines because they saw that in the advertising. And uh, th that's, you could buy them back and then just on letterhead. If it was for legitimate purposes, auto ordinance would accept the letter that says where they so made they, it they up. Say totally on, fictitious. on the side of law and order, but they yeah. weren't really doing much when they, uh, when they got a sales order. All right, you're going to be my eyes here, Rance, because I can't really All right. see Go. this from back here. Right. And yet you watch the site, too. Yeah. Go. Yeah, a little bit more. Well, this is pretty close. A little more way. Is that about right? Uh, you know, it's hard to say with the block in the way of like just a hair more. There, there, there. Did it? Yep, because it settles back when you do that a little. Now let me take a look at the end. Hard to see with all this. Stuff I know, but I'm just I'm trying to get it whether it's horizontal or not. Yeah, it may be a hair too much. I was hoping to see just a touch of that marker line there. Yeah, there isn't. I think we need to back it off just a hair. I see a touch of it, yeah. I see the marker. Do you? Yeah, it's pretty close. 
when you hit the light at this angle, you can well, see you look at it from when we give Yeah, look at it from that angle. And it, does it need to come back this way a well, little? Which way does it have to go? If you can see it, then yeah. let us know. It needs to go just a touch towards this way. Yeah. That's yeah. what Roger just said. Touch, yeah. Now, what I would suggest, that I didn't want to do it to your barrel, but you take a, uh, a scribe and just make, you can always take some cold blue and cover it later. Yeah. Instead of using a marker like this sure. for handling it. Right, this is not going to hit go much. No, just a hair. That's there. That's got to be it. Yeah. That looks correct. You know, to me. The, the marker is a little fat, but it looks like yeah. you're in, in the middle of the mark, so I think you got yep. it. There we are. And this looks horizontal to me, so. And whoever put this barrel in, it's tight enough to make the gun work. It ain't. It ain't cranked down. Nobody really yeah. did this to yeah. it. It's not really cranked down, but it's tight enough the headspace is right that it fires the cartridge, which is all you want, and you're going to replace it anyway. And nobody uh, filled it with Loctite either, so that tells me the repair was probably well before the era of Loctite, right? Because they yeah. probably would have used it. Maybe. Well, this this was done, us. they did something up here. This could be yeah. JB Weld, it could be Loctite, it could be sure. whatever. Because that definitely is not pinned. There's two felt pads on the inside of it. Was hand fitted to the wood, and then before they would stamp the butt stock and the butt plate with the same number, it had no relation to the serial number, no. But uh, then it, after it came back from the bluing tank, it would be reunited with the same stock. And the reason was they actually hand sanded everything so that it matched perfectly on the edges. And Chuck mentioned the um, how that should be pretty flush. That yeah, that. right, exactly. So when but whoever lightly sanded this didn't go crazy. That was a good thing. Yeah. Because yeah. they could have really wrecked that wood. This won't even be noticeable, to be honest with you. Or hardly noticeable. That's impressive how you have the right screwdriver heads. I mean, most of the armors around here probably just grab any flat blade screwdriver from the old toolbox over there. That's why the yeah. original screw was all uh, boogered up. Yeah, boogered that's up. exactly what they did. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. I always get the right screw for each part because yeah. you know, this, this is 100 years old for heaven's sakes. You know, give it a break. <laughs> And if the wood has swelled or anything like that over the years, you know, you don't want to risk. And I have a suspicion that these screws have never come out since they left the factory. You might be the first that would one doing this. Want me to hold it for you? No, I, I need a, a, a little smaller. Yeah, just you need to. Sorry. Just need a slightly thinner. Okay. Like, and the, the reason these are coming out so easy is because this wood is dry as a bone. So it's shrunk. Sure. Yeah, you can tell how dry it is. I'll, I'll hold it for you. Let's see. Now, again, these don't match the serial numbers. Yeah. So this could be anywhere up to 8,000, 9,000 number on it. They didn't, they just grabbed them out of a box and put them in there. That's a twelve thousand. Hmm. Wow. Twelve nine two four. Let's see how is that? Okay. Stamped in with the stamps, yeah. Twelve nine two four. Matching. Correct number of felt pads inside too, would you say? Uh, yeah, I don't have my tool to take them out, but usually there was four. Yeah. Some people will tell you no, there was only one in there, there wasn't one. I've taken Basically, so many cold butt stacks apart, there's usually four. It depended on how thick ones they used, since because they did have some thinner ones, but it completely covered the top of the of the bottle. I've seen some with three, and one of them's bigger. It depends yep. on when they, they cut the roll of felt. 